everyone and welcome to this video series on the fundamentals of research. Some of the content here you may have seen in the original video that was an hour long, but what I've done is, is condensed them into uh, separate videos that are much shorter and easier to digest and I've added some content, content to really go over the material. So why do I call this fundamentals? Well, because the content that I'll be going over really provides the building blocks of how to go about doing research. So this is really essential content to master before moving on to some of the other videos. So in this series of videos, we'll be going over concepts versus variables, the relationships between variables, which just like social relationships can be positive or negative or curvy. <laughs> well, we call them curvilinear, we'll get into that. Um, but in any case, uh, we'll be going over those. And also theories versus hypotheses. In this particular video that you're watching, uh, which is part one, we're going to go over what variables are. But before we do that, I'd like to take uh, just one quick moment to talk about why, uh, not why, well, there's a why, but here we're talking about the what. What are we trying to do, especially when it comes to social work research? In social work, we're interested in social problems and addressing them. So social work research is a, can be about understanding a particular social problem like discrimination, for example, or poverty, or child abuse. What we may also be trying to do is understand people's behaviors. So for example, what makes someone assertive versus aggressive? Or why do some people engage in crime? Or why are some people violent to the elderly? In some cases, we're trying to evaluate a treatment or an intervention or some sort of program or policy. And this really is about the question of does it work? So social work is an evidence-based profession. That means we use research to evaluate our programs, our treatments, our practices. So to do this, we need to figure out a way how to measure these things. Uh, when I say things here, um, like poverty, like elder abuse, like child abuse, etc., these are what we refer to as concepts. So what are concepts then, right? Uh, well, they are mental constructs or images in your brain that symbolize ideas, persons, things, or events. So when I say poverty, a whole bunch of images probably come to your mind. You have ideas about what poverty means. You may have experienced poverty and have feelings about it. But we need to go from these concepts to variables. So what is the difference between a concept and a variable? So this is right now I'm going to get into what is a variable. So a variable is the measurable aspects of a concept that can take on different values. And values are numbers. So a value is a number that is assigned or is determined by calculation or measurement. Okay, I know this is kind of a, a full sentence here, but just bear with me. Let me give you one example here, okay? So let's say I'm interested in political ideology. And that means a lot of different things, right? There's a lot of ideas and images that pop up when we think political ideology. So this is a concept. I need to figure out how to measure political ideology with a variable. Okay? So if I'm going to study political ideology, how am I going to measure it? One way is to ask people, what political party do you identify with? Because here in America, the party you identify with can often be a reflection of one's political ideology. So in this case, if I asked people this question, the answer choices might be Democrat, Republican, Independent, or other. 
uh, as a researcher, I can choose whichever one of these uh, categories I want to include. I may just be interested in the political ideology of Democrats versus Republicans, and then lump everybody else under other. The point here <laughs> is that these numbers that have, I have assigned to each of these categories are the values of the political ideology variable. So in this case, with this one question, I have measured political ideology and there are five categories or five values of my political ideology variable. So sometimes concepts are measured with a variable via some sort of calculation, which as the name suggests, involves some kind of math. Let's say I want to measure depression. This is a concept that is very complex and means different things to different people. So one way is I could have a survey where I ask people, have you felt sad or down all day, every day, or most days in the past two weeks? And to keep it even simpler, the option choices for them could just be a yes or a no. Have they felt this or not? And the numbers that I'm going to assign or the values will be a zero for the answer no and a one for the answer yes. But like I said, depression is very complex. This one uh, question isn't going to capture all that depression is. So I may ask a series of questions. Like for example, during this time, have you been unable to enjoy activities you once were able to enjoy? Or during this time, not or, and <laughs> during this time, have you had trouble sleeping at night, either trouble falling asleep or staying asleep? During this time, have you had feelings of helplessness, hopelessness, worthlessness? Okay, so here I have six questions that are getting at some of the aspects of depression. So I'm measuring via these questions aspects of the concept of depression. Okay, so what do I do with this in, um, information? Well, what I can do is I can add up all of these numbers, all the values from these questions, and I can get what we sometimes refer to as a score. So if I answered these questions, for example, and I was really depressed and I said yes to every single one of these questions, my score would be a six. If I answered the first two questions, yes, and all the rest, no, then my score would be a two. So in this case, I'm actually measuring depression via one variable, which is going to be this score. And these questions are referred to as items on the depression scale. So you might re hear people refer to scales, you know, an anxiety scale. That's the only one I can think of at the top of my head, but I'm sure, I'm sure you'll come across lots more when you're studying uh, research. Uh, to to add a little bit of confusion maybe, sometimes these are, instead of a scale, we refer to them as indexes or inventories. So it could be a depression index, a depression inventory. Um, they all essentially mean the same thing. So key here is that I've taken all of these questions and instead of having six variables measuring depression, I just have one, which is the sum of all of them combined. Okay, so I know this is kind of messy here on the slide, so let's just review really quickly and keep it simple. So, we want to measure a concept. We create a series of questions that can be asked. Each individual question is referred to as an item. The questions all together form a scale or an index or an inventory. How each person answers each question leads to a value or a number that is assigned for that response option, that answer to the question. Those numbers are added up to form a score for that individual on the variable. Okay, so it's fairly straightforward and lucky for us in the age that we live in, Excel and various statistical packages 
uh, do all the work for us. All right, so what we're talking about here is understanding how we go from concepts to having variables that measure those concepts. And what we're doing is called going from nominal to operational definitions. Nominal definitions are dictionary type definitions of concepts agreed upon by scientists, researchers, and the general public. So it's something you would find in the dictionary. For example, let's take poverty and depression. Poverty can be defined as a deficiency in resources, and depression can be defined as a state of feeling sad. These definitions don't offer us a way to actually measure the concept. What we need are operational definitions, which indicate the exact procedures that were followed in measuring that concept. So for example, poverty can be measured or defined by the federal poverty line. And depression can be measured or defined by the Beck Depression Inventory, which is something similar to what I presented earlier in terms of the six questions that I had, except it's much longer and goes into all the different aspects of depression. So remember I said sometimes we use the word inventory? Well, there you go. Okay, so in any case, these are variables. Anytime we can actually measure something via a question or what have you, then that's a variable. And this process, I kind of alluded to it earlier, well, not alluded, I actually said it, um, is called operationalizing. So I know it's, a, it's kind of a, a thick word there, but um, remember it uh, because I'll be using it in my lectures a lot. So you need to know what it means. Let me give you an example. So let's say I have spirituality, which is a concept. I need to figure out a way to measure uh, spirituality. Let's say I'm interested in how spirituality affects the treatment for depression. Okay. So I'm going to measure spirituality by asking the participants of the treatment program uh, how often they visit a church or temple or any religious institution. And in particular, I'm interested in the past month. So I want to know the number of visits. Well, that is going to lead to some self-reported number. You know, one person might say, I went uh, two times in the past month. Another person can say, oh, I went uh, zero times. Or, well, they would say I never went, but that would be a zero for us. <laughs> and another person could have gone 30 days. So it doesn't matter what the number is. Those numbers are the values of the spirituality variable. Okay, so for our na next class, uh, <laughs> for our next class session, write down another variable that can measure spirituality. What would be the values of that variable? If you're not in my class, that's fine. Thank you for watching. Um, if you want, you can try to come up with some variables to measure spirituality and put them in the comment section below and I can let you know if you're right. Okay, so something you may be wondering is why it's called a variable. And the answer is pretty straightforward because the values vary. I know, it's okay. Let me just <laughs> get into it. Okay, so how one person responds to questions on a survey, for example, can be different or vary from how another person responds to those same questions, okay? So we see this word vary, and lo and behold, it's in the actual word variable. Okay, so that's where it comes from. But what does it look like? So let's say I'm interested in outcomes after treatment for depression. And I just give, you know, a simple survey and it has the same six questions on it. So let's pretend that this is an actual survey filled out by participant number 23 in the intervention for depression, okay? And here she is. Let's call her Josephine, okay. Josephine. I'm making that name up, by the way. Please don't sue me if your name is Josephine. This has nothing to do with you. <laughs> this is a made-up person. Okay, so here you have the results. She selected yes 
for the following questions. Number one, number two, number four, and number five. Okay? So she said yes to four out of the six questions. Then we have the survey for the next person, participant number 24. And here he is, and we'll call him Jose. Jose answered yes to only three of the questions. Right, the first one and let's see, number three and number five. Okay, so if I were to add up their scores, Josephine would have a score of four on my depression scale, and Jose would have a three on the depression scale. Okay, so those numbers are different from each other, they vary. Now, you might be looking at Josephine's response to question one and noticing that it's a yes, and Jose's response to that first question, question, which is also a yes. And you may be asking yourself, or asking me in your head, <laughs> which is fine to do, um, but Dr. B, these values are the same. And that's true, they are the same. And they can be the same. The key word here and what I said was can be different. It doesn't mean that they will be different. It's just that they can be different. So Jose and Josephine actually could have answered the same questions in the same exact way and gotten the same exact score. They could be equally depressed. However, they also could not. So the fact that these values can vary is why we call it a variable. Okay, let's see what's next. Oh, a side but very important note about variables. They don't always have to come from questions. So sometimes we can measure concepts via observations, visual observations. For example, let's say I'm interested in the concept of attachment, and in particular attachments between mothers and their children. So how can I measure this? Yes, I could ask questions on a survey. How much do you love your child? How often do you do this, et cetera, et cetera. Or I could observe, for example, the number of times a child hugs her mother in the presence of a stranger. Or I could count the number of times a mother kisses her child while they're playing. Or I could count the number of times a mother hugs her child when she picks her up from school, etc. There's, there's many different ways uh, of taking observations that can measure attachment. The key is that in all of these observations, we're getting numbers. So for example, let's say I observe a mother-child dyad and I'm counting the number of times they hug. So the first dyad hugs three times. The second dyad hugs 14 times, and the third, none at all. So these numbers here are the values of my attachment variable. And they vary, or they can vary, I should say. Okay? It could be that these were all threes. But the point is, is that they could have all been different. <laughs> so that's why it's called a variable, and there's different ways of measuring them, including asking questions and observing them them. What do I mean by them? I mean concepts. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So there's different ways of measuring concepts. And uh, yeah, I think that's all I was going to say on that. Here are the uh, sources of the images. And that is the end of part one. But please make sure you go to part two, because that's where I'll be talking about um, uh, different types of variables. So there's the next video will be about the types of variables and you're probably shocked thinking, what? I thought I was done with variables. I just learned what they are. But no, there's more, so much more and it's very exciting and I hope you'll join me in the next one. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye.